So we recently ventured from the Field Museum in Chicago to Peoria, Illinois to attend the 2017 World Taxidermy Championships. We made a whole video of the competition and there's lots of footage of me running around the exhibit floor losing my mind over all of the great work, so be sure to go check that out too. What a time to be alive. But the whole time I'm there, I've got this question I keep coming back to. Why taxidermy? These artists could focus on any medium available, and they choose to devote their talents to making what is dead seem alive again. So we asked them. So. And so why taxidermy for you? Like, why pick this art form over other art forms? Uh, because it's the best. <laughs> I guess naturally I've just been fascinated by wildlife for most of my life. I mean, I think it's an art where you can apply yourself. It's broad reaching. It's not focused on just drawing. I think there's a lot more people nowadays that are are calling it an art form from the get-go, but usually it's just because they love to fish, you know, or, or they go hunting birds with their uncle. I just like animals. Yeah? <laughs> so you want to preserve them forever? Yeah. It combines art and science, and it's something that it just can't be digitized, and it's something so nice about still having that, like, visceral feeling and that, like, you know, turning something that's dead into something that lives on forever and something that people slow down and take a look at. It's woodworking, it's sculpture, it's painting, it's wiring, it's, it's skinning, it's so many odd things. And they all just come together, or at least you hope that they do. Because he likes taxidermy. He wanted to give the dead animals a new life. I, I got in this when I was 12. My dad left some stuff with a taxidermist, and it took him a very long time to get it back and he decided that we wanted to learn how to do our own stuff. When I was probably five years old I went with my father to the taxidermist to pick up a bear he had shot and it was just ever since then that's just what I wanted to do. And I was always an artsy type of kid drawing pictures and stuff like that. It was just kind of a natural thing for me to go into. What are you thinking about when you're creating these scenes? Because I noticed on this one like the skunk is peering up into a flower and there's an insect that it's having a reaction to. Is that kind of the the goal is that you want to create a scene like that? Yeah, you're, you're trying to catch a moment in time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's just like taking a picture. This was a last minute entry of mine. This is a burrowing owl. They're one of the only diurnal owls that there are. So they're like awake during the daytime. And so one of the things that they do is tilt their head back and forth so that their vision can catch movement. So if you get a flashlight and look in there, there's several skulls back in there. There's the feather like you rushed out. That's exactly what the story I'm trying to tell. And all those details that you might not normally have when in a diorama, there's no viewer distance here. Everything and everything more has to be there. Uh, by me, everything is genuine, including the head, including the fins. And I develop techniques to prevent the shrinkages and everything on a real head, on the real fins. How long did it take you to develop these techniques? 30 years. Wow. I like to be a kind of pioneer. I like to do things who nobody else does. I like that. Didn't, didn't a couple of years ago, you make a Sasquatch mount out of a yak fur. Actually, what I did is I just took the, the, the famous Patterson-Gimlin film and I built what was ever, whatever was in that film. I've seen a Sasquatch. I've seen one in my lifetime, so I know they're out there. The more that I'm kind of in this field, I'm noticing like it's, a, it's really difficult to make things look really lifelike when they're dead. Um, and I just like I'm completely blown away every time I'm here at Worlds, walking around, seeing the amount of detail that some of these pieces have. A show like this is uh, judged at the highest level. So as a competitor, I try to pick something that I think I know a lot about. My first chance to see the whole competition was last, yesterday evening. And I went in there and I was just amazed about all the great work. It was just incredible to see what people are able to do. And I guess it's the first time that people here have seen diaphanizations, which really? is really interesting. Yeah. So you're breaking new ground. I guess so, yeah. I had to translate old white papers from like 100 years ago out of French and German and different languages and then figure out where they were wrong or missing data and solve those problems as I went. Um, I learned mainly through self-teaching at first and then started going to stuff like this. The judges that judge, they're not here just to tell you what you did wrong, they're here to tell you what you did right. So if you can find someone's style that you either either you know relate to or you just really like it um, they do something a little bit different you know try to reach out to them and see if they're willing to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Taxidermy is a strange job you don't find it it finds you 
You know, you, you have families that they could be staunch vegans and anti-hunters and they will give rise to a taxidermist. They're very genuine people and a lot of fun, but you never know what to expect from them. You know, it's, it's, it's really an amazing industry. I would hope to be a taxidermist forever. I mean, I really love it. I love it so much. Um, I think in the future, since I live in a big city, I would want to see more people in the city appreciating wildlife more or just, you know, hope they look at it and they sort of are inspired to like, you know, enjoy the outdoors. I love that sentiment because I think that's what taxidermy has in a way always existed to do to like increase people's appreciation yeah, for sure. for the natural world and yeah. so I just love that there are people like you who are continuing to contribute to that <laughs> as like you know as a beautiful form of contemporary artwork that is valid and inspirational. Do you think you're going to be a world champion someday? No. No? <laughs> I disagree. It still has brains on it.